Friends, my name is Karthik. Uh, today we would be seeing on how to configure Hive Server to HE, and uh, we will see how the load balancing works when you have the Hive Server to HE setup. Right. So, uh, what steps we would be performing today is uh, as uh, this is an HE setup, so we will be uh, having a multiple Hive Server to. So, we will go ahead and add an another uh, Hive Server to instance to my existing cluster. And then we will have to enable the discovery mode. Uh, so we will just go to Ambari Hive Configs, and we will see this particular parameter is set to true. That is, it is uh, checked. Uh, so by default, this particular parameter would actually be marked yes. So uh, I don't think you will need to go ahead and uh, enable it again. So uh, once we do that, uh, we would be using the Zookeeper uh, JDBC stream. We will just copy the Zookeeper JDBC string from Ambari uh, to connect to Hive Server 2 from Beeline. So ideally, uh, we usually use the default port number, uh, which is the 10,000, and the Hive Server 2 host name when we try to connect to Hive Server 2 from Beeline. So we will, we will have a look into that as well. And to verify, uh, I mean, we will just first check what are the entries uh, for the high server to namespace uh, in the zookeeper command line interface which is the zkcli so we will first see uh, before uh, adding the high server to we'll just have a look of uh, what the entry is there and then uh, we will just do a net start at the end just to check if the load balancing has been happening properly or not so let's let's just have a look into it in a practical approach now so yeah so this is my cluster so as you can see currently i only have one uh, hive server 2 instance so let's quickly go ahead and add another one so just to show you so this is currently on my second node Since my cluster is curbized, I'm just giving it the admin principle. So I'm using the third node. So meanwhile, it installs the Hive Server to instance on the third node. We will just quickly check uh, what entry do we have in our uh, ZKCLI. So this is the uh, command which I'm using. So I'm just going to the path where I have the uh, ZKCLI.sh located. And after that, I'm just passing the uh, Zookeeper server host name along with the port number which is 2181 so let's go in. so if you see these are the uh, namespaces which I have under the zookeeper server so we will just have a look what inside we have under the hive server too so So as you can see, currently I haven't yet enabled the HA, right? So I have just added an another Hive server to instance, which is not yet completely started. So uh, this is the existing Hive server to instance uh, details. So it, it tells me in which node the Hive server to is located and in what port it is running and what version is it installed, right? So currently there is only one entry. So let's go back to Ambari and see what's happening over there. So now the second Hive Server 2 has been installed. It is ready to be started. So as you can see it's currently in the node 3. So let's go ahead and uh, start it. Meanwhile it starts, we'll just quickly go ahead and check if the parameter which we need is set to true or not so I'm just going to hide from there I just went to configs let's just search for discovery
so you can see this particular parameter it is currently marked I mean you can see it is as it is uh, checked yes so this is the parameter which is important for the HA and the load balancing to work and uh, you can also see the namespace which is defined for zookeeper so if you remember we just went into the zkcli we logged into the zkcli and we did a ls on slash hive server 2 which had the entries for the z node which had the information on which node currently has the hive server 2 set right so the service has restarted just go to hive so you can see i currently have uh, two hive server 2 instances so let's quickly check if the Z node entry has been updated. So I'm just doing an LS again. So now if you see, uh, I currently have like two uh, entries over here. So the first one is for the Hive Server 2, which is located under the node uh, Karthik Test 2, which we had it before. And the new one, which is currently added you can see it below here it says where uh, it's been added so it's been added under the Kartik test 3 so since there are like two hives over 2 there are like two entries what I see over here so with multiple hives over 2's you will have all the entries in this particular uh, namespace right so how the connection would work now is let's say uh, you evoke a BLAN section uh, you go to the BLAN you give the zookeeper JDBC string and uh, with the help of the zookeeper uh, the zookeeper would have the uh, information on which node my hive server 2 is uh, set up accordingly uh, it will uh, do a round robin fashion it will randomly select a hive server 2 instance a hive server 2 node and it will pass the execution to that particular node so that's how it happens so let's see that as well now. So I have my namespace in all set up and I also have the discovery mode which is being turned on. So I would just copy this particular JDBC URL. So this is the zookeeper URL. If you see the port number here, it's 2181. Ideally, you would be giving only this much with the port number as 10,000 if it is a non compromised cluster. The default port number but this time we will be just copying the zookeeper let's see so i'm just doing a net start before that just to show you there is no existing connection established So my Hive Server 2 is running in this particular port. So currently you can only see it's listening. There is nothing being evoked or no established connections. So let's see now. Let's evoke VLAN. Let's so use exclamation connect. Just paste the uh, so sorry. Okay. So I'm just copying the zookeeper string from memory. Paste it. Just pass the username and the password. So it seems like I have connected. So let's just test it out. Okay, it seems like an uh, permission to an exception. Let me just try with another user. for the user Roger so this guy should have the access let's see
okay so the show databases is working so we are successfully connected so let's see to which hive server 2 it is connected now so this vlan section if you see i uh, evoked it from the Kartik test 2 node i have just and another duplicate session let's do the next start again so if you see here uh, I have an established connection on the 10001 port uh, established and so this is the source and this is the destination so this particular IP address uh, belongs to the default uh, high server 2 instance which I had before right so now we will try to evoke uh, another VLAN session. We will just see uh, does that particular uh, VLAN session goes to the same high server too, or does it goes to another one? So I'm just going. I'm just logging to the VLAN from another node. Let's see. So I do have the principal over here. Just change the user. So uh, and another duplicate session for the node 3, just doing a net start. So currently there is uh, no connection, no established connection for the node 3, right? So let's go to this node 3, I'm just evoking the VLAN from this. Just copying the zookeeper string again. Uh, so if we see the show databases has been worked, so that means the zookeeper string did work for this particular session. So now to check to which node or to which high server instance this particular session has been connected, we'll just go to the duplicate session from which we evoked the hive, uh, sorry, uh, the VLAN session, which is the node 3. So let's just do a net start again. So when you do an start for the same uh, port number in which the high server 2 is running, now if you see uh, this has went to the uh, 206 IP, which is the uh, new hive server instance which we added before from Ambari right uh, so from node 3 uh, when I evoked the VLAN session it went to 206 and the same when we checked from the hive server uh, instance uh, the VLAN instance for the node 2 it went to the 205 that is the default hive server instance which I had in place right so here you can see two different VLAN session which we evoked from two different node went to two different hive server to instance uh, so this is something which the zookeeper uh, chooses from its end it's like a round robin uh, the request is random whichever hive server to instance is idle or if it is it has like less load the uh, VLAN session uh, would be passed over to that particular hive server to instance so that's how it works so what would happen if one of the hive server to goes down in this particular case right so both the session are currently active if you see even here it is active from the node 2 and even from the node 3 it is active both of them are working and both of them are connected to two different types of instances so if i bring down any one of them uh, the vlan session wouldn't go to the other active uh, or the one which is up and running high server instance right so let's say if i am executing a query from this particular vlan session and in between of the query execution the high server instance goes down so you will have to just uh, re-evoke the vlan session the uh, queries wouldn't work in that particular session again so you will have to just terminate that session and then you will have to evoke an another vlan session when which would go and connect to the active uh, high server instance so that's how it happens so if you want if i want to just show you that uh, let me just
So if you see here, uh, I was just talking about the automatic failover, uh, which says uh, if an Hive server instance failed while a client is connected, the session is basically lost. Since the situation needs to be handled at the client, there is no automatic failover. The client needs to reconnect using the same uh, Zookeeper string. So uh, if one uh, server goes down, to get the execution to the different Hive server too, you will have to just re-evoke the VLAN session. That's how it happens. And for the load balancing, we just had a word about it. So the request would be a random, uh, the Zookeeper would randomly pass the VLAN request to the available Hive server to instances. So that's how it is. Um, so so uh, that is it guys. So if you want more information regarding this, how to set up or if you want to read more about the Hive server to uh, HA setup, you could just visit the docs.hotworks.com. Just select your Ambari and HTTP version and you will get all the uh, details over there. You could also visit our uh, community forum, uh, Hotworks community forum, which is community.hotworks.com, where you could just post any questions for which you need answers or you can also explore the existing discussions going on for different issues or for different components. Uh, so that is all guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Thank you. Bye -bye.